السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم In the name of Allah سبحانه وتعالى Most gracious, most merciful الحمد لله رب العالمين All praise is indeed due to Allah سبحانه وتعالى والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه والتابعين ومن تبعهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين We send complete blessings and salutations upon Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, his entire household, all his companions. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bless them all and to bless every single one of us. My beloved brothers and sisters, a beautiful house of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, a beautiful eve of the month of Ramadan, a beautiful crowd of Muslimin and Muslimat. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to forgive us. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bless every single one of us. We are going through the reasons of revelation of verses of the Qur'an. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant us lesson from these beautiful uh, reasons. The story that I'm going to start with or the incident that I'm going to commence with is something extremely interesting. We all know that Islam is the fastest growing religion. The number of Muslimin phenomenal. It's not easy to accept Islam when the whole world seems to be portraying the wrong image of Islam. It's not easy to become Muslim when you hear that this person has actually embraced Islam. It should move you. We who are born Muslim at times are not as strong as those who have reverted to Islam after seeing the darkness. And this is why sometimes when you have something on the platter, when you have it you know, given to you, you don't appreciate it. But sometimes when you have searched for it, when you have prayed for it, when you have looked for it, and when it has come to you after a struggle, you tend to appreciate. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us appreciate what we have. Allah says quite clearly, If you are going to turn away, we will replace you with others, those who will not turn away. I was thinking a few moments ago that in Salatul Taraweeh, those who want to escape the salah, it's not going to stop people from fulfilling it. There will be others who will fulfill it. But you have to ask yourself, am I from amongst those who lazes, who becomes very lazy? Am I from amongst those who runs away? If that's the case, there are others who've taken my place. So I better not be from amongst those who run away. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept it from us. Amen. So at the time of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, there were many people accepting Islam. There were people who were embracing the fold of Islam. And obviously there were others who could not stomach this. They could not see it. They thought of a plan, every plan, to try and bring these people back. The weak from amongst them, they thought, let us hatch a plan so that we can bring them back. And one of these plans was, they thought to themselves and they spoke to themselves. The names mentioned here, Abdullah ibn Saif, Adi ibn Zayd, and Al-Harith ibn Awf. This is a narration made mention by Ibn Ishaq, he is narrating from Abdullah ibn Abbas radiallahu an. He says, these three were speaking to one another. They said, let, let us hatch a plan whereby in the daytime, in the morning, we will pretend to be Muslimin. And then in the evening, we will go back to what we were worshipping. They were people of the book. And they said, we are doing this in order that those who have accepted Islam would come back. We will try to con them that all these faiths are actually one. All these faiths are one. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala exposed them. Verse number 72 of Ali Imran was revealed, exposing these three and a few others who had this plan. Allah says, a group from amongst the people of the book, they said, believe in that which was revealed to the believers in one part of the day and the other part of the day, disbelieve in it in order to create confusion so that they may return. And obviously they were exposed and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala clarified it for us all. To say the truth is manifest. No need to go back once you have found it. My brothers and sisters, those who doubt the correctness of Islam, it's actually because of lack of knowledge or misinformation that they have. 
when we have knowledge and the knowledge is sound, we will never ever doubt what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has blessed us with. Then there is a verse which is connected to several incidents. And I must pause for a moment to tell you that some of the verses of the Quran were revealed for more than one incident. They were sometimes revealed repeatedly in order to clarify the position or to make clear the guidance on certain matters that perhaps occurred at different times. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has then sent Jibreel alayhi salam every Ramadan to study the Quran with Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to revise it in order to get the order of the verses, the order of the surahs, in order to know which verse falls into which surah. Hence, we have the Quran as we have it today. But the verses in the Quran were not revealed in this order. Rather, this order exists in the preserved tablet with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And when it was completed 23 years later, we had this beautiful order memorized in the hearts of the men and later on to be transcribed. One might ask, why didn't they write it down immediately? That's a question that some people say. The reason is, they were people who were unable to read and write in most of the cases. It is Allah who sent, it is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who sent from amongst the unlettered a messenger from them. So it shows that the bulk of them were unable to read or write, but they had memories. Memories that took back the lineage of their camels seven generations. We don't even know our own lineage for generations. Allahu Akbar. May Allah forgive us. So at that particular time, there is a hadith muttafaq alayh by Abdullah ibn Mas'ud radiallahu an. He says, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, whoever takes an oath, whoever swears an oath by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and he is lying in order to take or usurp the wealth of another, he will meet Allah whilst Allah is very angry with him on the day of judgment. So you don't ever make a promise or take an oath while you are lying in order to deceive someone, to steal from them, to usurp their wealth. So Al-Ash'ath ibn Qais radiallahu an, when he heard this hadith, he says, Wallahi, there was between myself and a Jewish man, a piece of land that was disputed, it was mine. But the Jewish man said it was his. So we went to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and as usual, he was very just. He asked the Jewish man or he asked me to begin with, do you have any evidence to prove it is yours? Al-Ash'ath ibn Qais radiallahu anhu says, no, I don't have any evidence. So the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam looks at the Jewish man and he says, are you prepared to swear an oath by Allah that this land belongs to you? So Al-Ash'ath ibn Qais radiallahu anhu he says, hang on, O Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, it is so easy for this man to just say, yes, I swear by Allah, it's my land, and you're going to give it to him. Yet it's not his land. You see, this goes to show that to this day, people use wallahi and they're telling a lie. In fact, I've, my experience shows that when someone puts more tashdeed on the term wallahi, perhaps they have something to hide. Wallahi, my brother, why are you doing that? Perhaps you have something to hide. I didn't say you're lying, but there's something wrong. We should be such that without swearing the oath, people believe us. That's a mu'min, that's a believer. There was a time a few generations back, in fact, earlier on with our own parents, when if they were to give just their tongue, it was enough. Anyone would believe them for a million dollars. But today for five rands, they still won't believe us. <laughs> it's a reality. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to protect us. So. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam paused for a moment and the verses were revealed. Verse number 77 of Ali Imran. إِنَّ الَّذِينَ يَشْتَرُونَ بِعَهْدِ اللَّهِ وَأَيْمَانِهِمْ ثَمَنًا قَلِيلًا أُولَٰئِكَ لَا خَلَاقَ لَهُمْ فِي الْآخِرَةِ وَلَا يُكَلِّمُهُمُ اللَّهِ وَلَا يَنظُرُ إِلَيْهِمْ يَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ وَلَا يُزَكِّيهِمْ وَلَهُمْ عَذَابٌ أَلِيمٌ Those who swear an oath 
using the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, yet through that oath, they intend to, to buy something, which means they're exchanging an oath in order to deceive people out of their wealth. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, they will have no portion of the hereafter. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will not look at them on the day of judgment. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will not speak to them on the day of judgment. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us. He says, for them is a severe punishment. So before you make or before you take an oath, think very hard. Then in Sahih al-Bukhari, a narration of Abdullah ibn Abi Awfa, another narration connected to the same verse. He says there was a man who came to the marketplace and he, listen carefully because this happens in our lives, it happens a lot. He was promising an oath using Allah's name, guaranteeing that he was offered a certain amount for the commodity he wanted to sell. And the only reason he lied was he wanted someone to offer him a higher offer. A lot of people do this. They tell you, hey, I've been offered $500 for this. There was no such offer, but he wants to hear you say, okay, I'll offer you 600. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us. Really, this is happening to this day. People lie in order to earn a dollar or two, a rand or two. Wallahi, it's not worth it. Allah says, such people who use the name of Allah in order to lie regarding their cost price or regarding an offer that was made to them for a certain commodity, Allah doesn't look at them on the day of judgment. They've lost their akhirah. For them is a severe punishment. Why use the name of Allah to tell a lie? May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us from falsehood. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us goodness. Then, Another narration reported in Sunan al-Nasa'i and by Imam Ahmad in his Musnad by Abdullah ibn Abbas radiallahu an. He says there was a man from amongst the Ansar who accepted Islam and later he quit apostasy. He quit Islam and he went back to another religion that he belonged to. And after some time he wanted to come back. So he inquired, he inquired, is it okay if I come back? I've learned and I've repented and so on. So they asked the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in this regard. Verses of Surah Ala Imran 86 to 89 were revealed in this regard. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, كَيْفَ يَهْدِ اللَّهُ قَوْمًا كَفَرُوا بَعْدَ إِيمَانِهِمْ وَشَهِدُوا أَنَّ الرَّسُولَ حَقُّ وَجَاءَهُمُ الْبَيِّنَاتِ How? How will Allah guide someone who disbelieved after they had seen the truth? after they had believed in Allah and His Messenger, and after the truth had come to them, they then disbelieved. And the verses continue and continue until Allah says, There is an exception of those who repent to Allah and make amends for them, indeed, Allah is most forgiving, most merciful. So even those who have left Islam, there is forgiveness for them if they repent and come back. Remember this. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks about it. And as we said, it is a narration of Abdullah ibn Abbas radiallahu an in Sunan al-Nasai. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant us an understanding. Imagine, if a person who quit the deen, there is repentance for him while he's alive to come back. And Allah says, I'm most forgiving, most merciful. What about the examples of you and I who have sinned, but we have not forgotten our faith. We have not reneged. We have not given up our faith. Surely there is more hope for us. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us during these beautiful days of the month of Ramadan. It is a month of forgiveness for sure. Anyone who does not achieve forgiveness during this beautiful month of Ramadan, they've wasted the month. Wallahi, my brothers and sisters, it is not a joke to come in and stand for Salatul Taraweeh for an hour, two hours, three hours, the longer, the greater the reward. Remember this. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless you all. And may Allah bless us all and accept from us the moments that we are standing in Taraweeh. The bulk of us have not really made an effort to memorize, nor have we made an effort to learn the work or to prepare what is to be recited this evening. Most of us come and we are listening. That is the easy job. The more difficult job is for those who are actually reciting. May Allah make it easy for us all. So my brothers and sisters, that is an incident that occurred and we have learned a lesson from it. Another very, very interesting incident. The Prophet wasallam, in the battle of Uhud, he was harmed. His teeth 
or his tooth was broken. He had a gash on his face, sallallahu alayhi wasallam. His beard had the most blessed droplets of blood ever to exist on them. Subhanallah. There was no decisive victory for either side. The battle of Uhud. The reason is, the Muslimin, some of them, disobeyed the instruction of Allah and His Messenger. And that shows us, anyone from amongst us, when we disobey the instruction of Allah and His Messenger, how do we expect success? We want to succeed, but we want to succeed with our own formula. A formula that really has already been tried and tested, and it has flopped and failed. What about those that have been tried and tested, and they have succeeded? The formula of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. May Allah make it easy for us to turn to Him. Ameen. So at that point, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he made a statement. Obviously, he was in pain. And obviously, it was something that was not easy to be seen and witnessed. And he was concentrating on the fact, I am a messenger of Allah, calling people towards Allah, and look at what they've done to me. Imagine I'm calling you towards goodness, and you're beating me up. I'm calling you to become a better person, quit your lies, quit your bad habits, stop worshipping sticks and stones, and you want to beat me up. So, so he makes a statement, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. It is narrated by Imam Muslim from Anas ibn Malik radiallahu an. He says on that day, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, how will such a nation succeed? Those who have harmed their messenger while he was calling them towards goodness. How will they succeed? And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed verses, amazing, amazing verses. Verse number 128 of Surah Ala Imran. لَيْسَ لَكَ مِنَ الْأَمْرِ شَيْءٌ أَوْ يَتُوبَ عَلَيْهِمْ أَوْ يُعَذِّبَهُمْ فَإِنَّهُمْ ظَالِمُونَ The instruction is not yours, O Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. It is ours. We are the ones who will decide whether we want to forgive them, guide them, etc., etc. Yes, they are oppressors. They have done wrong. But it's up to us to do what we wish. Amazing. The Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Let's take a look at another incident connected to the same verse. He used to pray. He used to pray against certain people. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Those who harmed him so much. He used to pray against them. This is a hadith in Sahih al-Bukhari. Narrated by Abdullah ibn Umar radiallahu anhuma. And he says, The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam used to pray against certain people in Salatul Fajr and various other times. And when this verse was revealed, where Allah is saying, we can choose what we want to do with them, he stopped. And then he started praying for people. And then he continued having hope. Subhanallah. I want to draw your attention to something that happened earlier than Badr, uh, sorry, earlier than Uhud. In the 10th year of Nubuwa, of prophethood, when the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam went to Ta'if, take a look at what he did. He, the same thing happened where they, they caused the most blessed droplets of blood to fall into the shoes of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And he prayed for them, not against them. With us, small problem with your own sister-in-law. Ya Allah, destroy her. Ya Allah, break her. Ya Allah, you know, break them, Ya Allah. Finish them up, Ya Allah. Where are you? Why don't you raise your hands? Perhaps the angels are saying, Ameen. Ya Allah, soften their hearts, bring them together. Ya Allah, unite our families. Every single extended family has to have politics. It's impossible to have an extended family without a little bit of politics. That is your test. No one did black magic on you, remember this. Because that's a quick way out. Nobody did it. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala safeguard us. We'd rather stop blaming people. Blame shaitan. Make dua for the people. Oh Allah, grant my brother goodness. Unite us, ya Allah. Bring us together as families. Continue making that dua. Wallahi, a day will come when that will be responded by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But I make dua for your destruction. You make dua for my destruction. Take a look at what's happening to the whole ummah today. People are struggling and suffering. Each one cursing the other. Perhaps it's time to stop all that. Perhaps it's time to start praying for the people whom you disagree with. For the people whom perhaps you've had a problem with. Ask Allah to bless them and guide them. Take a page and a leaf from these beautiful verses and from the lesson of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Subhanallah. Let's take a look at another powerful lesson. Sunan Abi Dawood and Sunan At-Tirmidhi. They've made mention of a hadith of Ibn Abbas radiallahu anhu. 
where he says, just after the battle of Badr, there was a red garment that happened to disappear from the booty, you know, from what they had collected. There was a red garment that happened to disappear. So some of the people happened to throw comments. Listen carefully because it happens to this day. Something goes missing in your home, my beloved sisters. A piece of jewelry, your earrings go missing, your ring goes missing. Who is to blame? Let's be honest. Who's the first person you think about? The maid. I Sorry, I heard someone here say it. <laughs> I didn't think of it. I heard someone here say it. The maid. There you are. The innocent maid who's worked for you tirelessly for so long and you have misplaced it somewhere. When you find it after two weeks, guess what you end up saying? Tell me. She put it back. May Allah forgive us. May Allah forgive us. These are the statements people make. We don't learn a lesson from the Quran where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, some ignorant people happen to say, perhaps Muhammad, peace be upon him, took that red clothing for himself. The red garment, perhaps it was for himself. Astaghfirullah. How dare people utter these words? The Prophet, peace be upon him, never took anything deceivingly. He never cheated. He was a Nabi of Allah. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reveals verses. Verse number 161. وَمَا كَانَ لِنَبِيٍ أَنْ يَغُلَّ وَمَنْ يَغْنُلْ يَأْتِ بِمَا غَلَّ يَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ It is not befitting for a messenger. It is not for a messenger. This Nabi of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to take something deceivingly whilst cheating. He did not take anything. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Allah says, whoever takes something, usurps it, takes it whilst cheating or deceiving, it will be brought forth on the day of judgment and they will have to give full account of it. May Allah protect us from false accusation. Remember, if you don't know, remain silent. You might want to investigate. And if you don't come up with some solution, if you don't come up with a meaningful finding, perhaps your silence would drive you to paradise because that false accusation, the probabilities of that being wrong are great. And even if they are small, the chances of us entering Jahannam because we've accused an innocent person, wallahi, we wouldn't like to take that risk. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us. Let's stop accusing one another of doing things we've not done. A lot of us have su'ud dhan. The minute something happens, the worst possible thought comes to our mind. As Muslimin, we are taught to have husnud dhan, which means the minute something happens, the best possible thought should come to your mind. Wallahi, that's a mu'min. Are you really a believer? My brothers and sisters, do you really believe? If you do, have a good thought when something happens. Yes, whilst you're investigating, the probabilities are wide open. You may want to investigate a load of people, but you will not claim that anyone is guilty until they are proven so. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us learn this beautiful lesson. Another very, very interesting lesson reported in Sunan al-Nasai by Abdullah ibn Abbas radiallahu anhu. He says, after the battle of Uhud, let's listen carefully, after the battle of Uhud, and you know what happened in Uhud, we made mention of some of it a little bit earlier. Abu Sufyan at that time was not a Muslim. News came to the Muslimin that he has gathered the people once again to come back to attack. Or he is daring the mu'mineen with the army once again to come back. And obviously now it was a difficult time. The mu'mineen had been injured because you know the archers had come down from that mount. They had suffered injury and they were at a, in, a, in a time or in a position where it was very difficult for them to prepare another quick platoon and to go back to face Abu Sufyan somewhere else just after Uhud. So the Prophet ﷺ, according to some of the narrations, he called on some of his companions, in fact, the companions, and he said, let's go. And some of them got ready. Subhanallah, as injured as they were, the battle just finished. They now heard that Abu Sufyan has come, or he is preparing an army, and these people have gathered for you. So they decided, let's go. They joined the messenger Sallallahu and they started marching. Subhanallah. They started marching. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed beautiful verses. Because when the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam heard that Abu Sufyan has gathered once again, do you know what he said? 
حسبنا الله ونعم الوكيل الله is sufficient for us and he is the best disposer of our affairs the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam was taught that when ibrahim alayhi salam was thrown into the fire that's the same words that he uttered the fire was cold a miracle happened so muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam uttered these words and you know what they ended up going and they found no one there and they did some business deals there they earned some profit and they came back subhanallah so instead it was allah driving them there to earn something and to come back but there were groups of people who remained behind now listen to what allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says verse number 161 of surah al imran oh sorry 172 الذين استجابوا لله والرسول من بعد ما أصابهم القرح للذين أحسنوا منهم واتقوا أجر عظيم. Allah is making mention of أجر عظيم, the great reward for whom? For those who responded to the call of the messenger when he called to them after that battle where they had suffered quite a bit of injury and the call came immediately thereafter. Those who responded positively, Allah says, for them is أجر عظيم. They will have a great reward. الذين قال لهم الناس إن الناس قد جمعوا لكم فخشوهم فزادهم إيمانا. Allah says. When the people came to Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam to tell him and the believers that those Abu Sufyan and the lot have now gathered again for you, so you need to fear them. In fact, it made the mu'minin stronger in their iman. They feared nobody. Subhanallah. They feared none. وَقَالُوا حَسْبُنَ اللَّهُ وَنِعْمَ الْوَكِيلِ They uttered the words, حَسْبُنَ اللَّهُ وَنِعْمَ الْوَكِيلِ Allah is enough for us. Allah is sufficient for us. If Allah is with us, we don't need anyone else. He is the best disposer of all our affairs. He will take care of everything connected to us. Learn these words, my brothers and sisters. حَسْبُنَ اللَّهُ وَنِعْمَ الْوَكِيلِ Some of the most powerful words. Utter them when you've got news that is bad. And utter them just like that. To thank Allah. To praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. حَسْبُنَ اللَّهُ وَنِعْمَ الْوَكِيلِ Allah says, فَانْقَلَبُوا بِنِعْمَةٍ مِّنَ اللَّهِ وَفَضْلٍ لَمْ يَمْسَسْهُمْ سُوءٍ وَاتَّبَعُوا رِضْوَانَ اللَّهِ وَاللَّهُ ذُو فَضْلٍ عَظِيمٍ Allah makes mention of how their condition was changed completely into one of goodness and peace and the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and so on. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us goodness in this world and the next. Then Ibn Ishaq rahimahullah makes mention of a narration and this is in Tafsir al-Tabari. Ibn Abbas radiallahu anhu, he speaks of at the time when Abu Bakr al-Siddiq radiallahu anhu had entered into a discussion there was a Jewish man by the name of Finhas. And this man, when the verse was revealed by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, saying that who is there, who is prepared to spend for the cause of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Who is going to give? Who is going to lend for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Who is ready to deposit for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and Allah will give them back, multiply. Obviously, a warped mind starts thinking, why does Allah need my money? You see, a warped mind, when you say spend for Allah, a warped mind says, why do I need to spend for Allah? Allah is the provider. He should be giving himself. But people don't understand Allah uses us. in order to fulfill the needs of others. But he is the fulfiller of the needs. He gave you in the first place, and then he's saying, you know what? Don't become too clingy. Don't stick too much to this wealth. Don't actually become miserly. Learn to spend it. Learn to focus, because your focus should be on the hereafter, and not just material items of this world. So this Jewish man by the name of, by the name of Finhas, you know what he said? He said, we... are actually not in need of Allah. Look, Allah is in need of us. And the evidence of it is that Allah is saying, give for my cause. So we are wealthy and Allah is the one who's poor. 
Astaghfirullah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us from such statements. In fact, Ibn Abi Hatim has made mention of a narration, and this is also in Tafsir al-Tabari, also by Abdullah ibn Abbas radiallahu anhu. He says, when the verse was revealed, Who is ready to give Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the credit that will be multiplied when it comes back? So what happened? A certain man, he made a statement and he said, Is your Rabb poor that he is asking us? If he was wealthy, he would not be asking us. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed verses. Obviously, the story ends that Abu Bakr as-Siddiq radiallahu anhu could not tolerate the statement. So he slapped this man, Finhas. Because the man is saying, that Allah is poor and I am rich. Look, Allah is asking me for money. Astaghfirullah, astaghfirullah. La hawla wa la quwwata illa billah. So Abu Bakr as-Siddiq radiallahu anhu slapped him. And they went to the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And they, they, this man went to the messenger and said, Look at what your companion has done to me. Slapping me for nothing. Abu Bakr as-Siddiq radiallahu anhu says, No, it wasn't for nothing. This is what happened. The man says, no, nothing happened at all. Look at the lies, the falsehood. Not realizing they were living during the time of revelation. Revelation would come and expose such statements. You cannot lie to the messenger sallallahu alayhi wasallam. You would be exposed within split seconds. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed verses, verse number 181 of Surah Al-Imran. لَقَدْ سَمِعَ اللَّهُ قَوْلَ الَّذِينَ قَالُوا إِنَّ اللَّهَ فَقِيرٌ وَنَحْنُ أَغْنِيَاءُ سَنَكْتُبُ مَا قَالُوا وَقَتْلَهُمُ الْأَنْبِيَاءَ بِغَيْرِ حَقَّ وَنَقُولُ ذُوقُوا عَذَابَ الْحَرِيقَ Allah has heard the statement of the one who has said that Allah is poor and we are the ones who are wealthy. We will write down that statement. And the fact that they are the ones who had murdered the previous prophets. This man was a Jewish man. And Allah says we, they were the ones who had murdered the previous prophets. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says such a person will definitely be served a painful punishment. A punishment that is burning. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us from the fire. Never make statements. Never make statements of this nature. Allah listens. Allah knows. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has recorded it. May Allah forgive us for the statements we've made that have been wrong. And this is why, if we take a look at verse number 186, which comes just a few verses after that, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes mention of this incident here, or it has been revealed after the incident of Abu Bakr as-Siddiq, where when you hear bad statements about Allah and His Messenger, it hurts you, doesn't it? But how do you react to it? Allah tells you. When we see cartoons and videos, or when we hear of them, I don't think we would like to see them, but when we've heard of them, how should we as believers react? Well, let's go back and read verse number 186 of Surah Ala Imran. Allah says, لَتُبْلَوُنَّ فِي أَمْوَالِكُمْ وَأَنفُسِكُمْ You will definitely be tested when it comes to your wealth. Your wealth you will be tested in, and yourselves you will be tested in. وَلَتَسْمَعُنَّ مِنَ الَّذِينَ أُوتُوا الْكِتَابَ مِنْ قَبْلِكُمْ وَمِنَ الَّذِينَ أَشْرَكُوا أَذًا كَثِيرًا And you will hear from the people of the book and from the polytheists a lot of very, very hurtful statements. There will be hurtful things coming from their direction. Who? The people of the book as well as the mushriks, the polytheists. They will say harmful things. Allah says, وَإِن تَصْبِرُوا وَتَتَّقُوا فَإِنَّ ذَلِكَ مِنْ عَزْمِ الْأُمُورِ If you bear sabr, patience, and you bear what is known as taqwa, you are conscious of Allah. Develop your closeness to Allah, and you bear patience, then definitely that is the best thing you could do. My brothers and sisters, I want to end by saying, Every time they tried to draw a cartoon, and every time they came up with videos, and every time they lied about Allah and His Messenger, guess what happened? 
Islam spread like wildfire on the globe. More and more people entered the fold of Islam. Even some of those who initiated some of those videos have already accepted Islam. And there is witness of it. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us goodness. The deen belongs to Allah. Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa is the best of creation. He needs not my protection and yours. He has the protection of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. His reputation is intact. No matter what people try, they will never ever be able to harm the reputation of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us and may he allow us the understanding or grant us the understanding of the status of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us all jannah. Wa sallallahu wa sallam wa baraka ala nabina Muhammad. Subhanallahi bihamdihi, subhanakallahumma bihamdik. Nashhadu an la ilaha illa anta nastaghfiruka wa natu.